Good day, grade 8. Welcome to Food Processing Exploratory. So, there are different um, topics under food processing. And in grade 8, okay, or in fourth quarter, we will discuss about salting, curing, and uh, smoking. So, the first topic is about prepare equipment, tools, materials, and Utensils. So, these are the objectives for week one. Prepare equipment and tools for salting, curing, and smoking in accordance with manufacturer's specification. And check, sanitize, and calibrate equipment for the above food processing methods in accordance with manufacturer's specification. So, in this lesson, or this lesson covers... The preparation, use, and operation of equipment, tools, materials, and utensils commonly used in processing foods by salting, curing, and smoking. The large equipment necessary for the proper preparation of food includes a refrigerator and a range. Proper use and care of equipment will not only make food preparation quicker and easier but also ensures their lasting service. It comes with a manual that guides the user how they are operated, cared, and stored. It is important for you to be familiar with the specification of equipment before using them, wherein it includes its handling requirements, operating requirements, discharge label, reporting, testing, positioning, and refiling. Now, let's proceed to the discussion of the common equipment, tools, and utensils used in processing food by salting, curing, and smoking. Now, let's start first with the equipment. When we say equipment, this is a complicated tool. It is either operated manually or or motor, or with electricity. So, these are the examples of equipments used in salting, curing, and smoking. Okay? Refrigerator, freezer, gas range, gas stove, meat grinder, and sealer. Now, let's discuss the refrigerator. It is used for storing foods like fruits and vegetables in low temperature which is 4 degrees Celsius. It is available in different sizes. Next one is the freezer. Freezer is used for storing foods like fish and raw meat at an above freezing point, 0 degree Celsius. It is um, available as vertical or upright freezer. Next one is the poly or impulse sealer. So, this is used to seal packaging and other thermoplastic materials. It comes in different types like cabinet, barrel, or drum. Okay, number four, gas range. This is used for heating or cooking or for processing foods. It comes in various sizes and capacities. Number five, gas stove. This is used as a source of heat, commonly used for cooking. It, uh, it's either single or double burner or available in a single or double burner and number six meat grinder meat grinder is used for fine chopping of meat it's either manually or electrically operated so again, those are the 
equipments used in salting, curing, and smoking. Now, let's proceed to measuring instruments or devices. So, these devices are used to measure ingredients. Okay, weighing scale, measuring cup for liquid, salinometer, measuring spoon, measuring cups for dry ingredients, beakers, and graduated cylinder. Now, let's discuss the salinometer. Salinometer is used for measuring the pH level and degree of salinity or brine strength of a solution. So, what is pH level? pH level is for water or for liquid. pH is a measure of how acidic or basic the water is. Okay, so to check the acidity of the water, we need to use, we need to measure the pH using the salin salinometer. Okay, so the range goes from 0 to 14 with 7 being neutral. Okay, pH of less than 7 indicate acidity. So if the pH is less than 7, it means that the water is acidic. Whereas a pH of greater than 7 indicates a base. Okay. pH is re really a measure of the relative amount of free hydrogen and hydroxyl ions in the water. Now, to check the pH level, we can use the sal salinometer. And again, it is also used to measure the degree of salinity. Salinity is salt or brine strength of a solution. When we say brine, it is a mixture of salt and water. Now, if you want to check or to measure the salinity or the brine strength of a solution, you can use the salinometer device. Okay, next one is graduated cylinder. It is used for measuring the volume of liquids. It has a wide mouth cup usually made of glass or plastic. Okay, next is the weighing scale. Weighing scale, this is used for weighing raw materials and other ingredients. It has different capacities and sensitivities. It can be digital or clock type. Okay, next one is measuring spoons. These are used for measuring small quantities of dry and liquid ingredients. With fractional measures such as one tablespoon, one half tablespoon, one teaspoon, one fourth teaspoon, and one eighth teaspoon. Number five, measuring cups for dry ingredients. These are used for measuring dry ingredients like salt, sugar. With fractional measures like one cup, one half cup, one fourth cup, and one eighth cup. Next one is measuring Cups for liquid ingredients. These are used for measuring liquid ingredients. Usually made of transparent glass or plastic with graduated cup fractions as one, three fourth, two third, one third, one fourth, or one eight cup. And then last, beaker. It is used for measuring liquids or solutions. It's usually made of transparent glass. So those are the measuring instruments or devices. So those are used to measure um, the ingredients. It's either liquid or dry ingredients used in salting, curing, and smoking.
Let's proceed to the utensils for cutting, preparing, and cooking. So these are the examples. Okay, let's discuss first the... Okay. The knife. Knife is used for cutting or slicing fish or meat and other food items for or for scaling fish. Knife comes in various sizes and kinds. For example, a paring knife, the smallest knife, is used for paring or for removing the skin of fruits or vegetables. And then the common knife used by chef is chef knife, okay? Again, this is used for cutting or slicing fish or meat and other food items or for scaling fish. Next one is the kitchen scissors. It is used for trimming the fins of fish. Fins in Tagalog, palikpik, okay, of fish. It is small and handy, made of metal. Next one is cutting board. It is used to protect the table while cutting raw materials. There are different colors of cutting board. That colors serve as purpose. For example, white. White is used for white meat. Okay, red. This is used for red meat, like pork or beef. And then green is used for vegetables with green colors. Okay, so there are fruits and vegetables with yellow colors. Then blue is used for fish. Okay, the purpose is to prevent, prevent the stains coming from the fruits, vegetables, fish, or meat. Okay, that's why there are different colors of cutting board. Again, this is used to protect the table while cutting raw materials. It's available in different sizes, usually made of plastic or wood. Next one is the strainer. Strainer is used to separate solid from liquid materials. It's usually made of metal and plastic. Next one is colander. It is used to drain water from foods. And colander, available in various sizes and forms, some with stand, like this. Okay, next one is ladle. It is used for scooping, mixing of foods. Available in wood, plastic, and metal. Number seven, tongs. It is used to lift or hand, handle food and other raw materials, especially when it is hot. Tongs has two long arms. Again, this is used to lift or handle food and other raw materials, especially when it is hot. Number eight, saucepan or pot. It is used for cooking. Pan with one handle. Pot with two handles. This is the difference. Um, sauce pan. It has one handle. While sauce pot has two handles. And this is used for cooking sauce. This is the difference between pan and pot. Again, sauce pan has, it has one handle. While sauce Pat has two handles. And this is used for cooking sauce. Okay? Next one, casserole. It is used for cooking and 
boiling. Casserole available in various sizes. Some are made of aluminum. Some are made of stainless steel. Okay, next is mixing bowls. It is used for mixing ingredients. Available in graduated sizes and has sloping side, slides. Okay, next number 11, basin. It is used for washing raw materials. Basin available in plastic and stainless steel or aluminum and available in different sizes. Next one, number 12, filler. It is a utensil for removing the skin from fruit and vegetables. If you want to remove the skin from fruit and vegetables, you can use filler. Okay. It's available in plastic and stainless steel. Okay, number 13, wooden spoon. Wooden spoon is used for stirring or for mixing brine. Of course, it is made of wood or made up of wood. So again, those are the utensils. For preparation, for cutting, and for cooking. So again, the equipment, tools, and utensils given or presented to you are used in Salting, curing, and smoking. Now, to ensure a quality product in food processing, you should observe the proper attire during the process. Of course, we should wear PPE, or also known as personal protective equipment. So, what are these PPE? Apron. Okay. Face mask, towel, gloves, and hair in it. So those are PPE used to ensure a quality product in food processing. So we should observe the proper attire or wearing of this during the process. Okay, now let's proceed to the procedure in checking, sanitizing, and calibrating of the equipment and tools. Now let's discuss about checking. Have all the equipment checked for any defects? Discard that those that are defective. Re repair if necessary. Periodical maintenance on the use of equipment and tools must be Practice and observe every after each use based on the maintenance schedule for every equipment. So we have to check all the equipments available in our kitchen. So we need to check for any defects, discard that those are defective, and repair if necessary. Next, let's proceed to sanitizing. Sanitizing is getting rid of the number of microorganisms on the surface where food comes in contact with it. It cannot be accomplished until the surface surfaces where foods are processed are clean. Why we need to sanitize? Okay, Proper sanitation of equipment tools and utensils will, number one, remove dirt or food material that harbor microorganisms. Number two, eliminate bacteria. Number three, prevent contamination. Number four, extend shelf life. Number five, improve 
food safety, and number six, reduce risk of involvement in food poisoning. And number seven, facilitate preventive maintenance. Those are the reasons why we need to sanitize our equipment, tools, and utensils before the preparation, cutting, and cooking of the raw materials for salting, curing, and smoking. Uh, let's proceed to this one. The most common and the cheapest sanitizing agent used is chlorine. And how is the sanitizing solution prepared? So, area to be sanitized, hand deep. Okay? Equipment, floor, and washing vegetables. Now, let's say we need to sanitize the hand deep. Okay? So, this is the solutions for sanitizing the hand deep. Okay, for water, we need 5 gallons and for chlorine, 10.8 ml. And then, the amount of time in contact with the surface is 2 to 5 minutes only. So, soak the hand deep in a solution or sanitizing solution for 2 to 5 minutes only. After that, rinse in the clean water. Okay, next for the equipment, okay, solution, 5 gallons of water and 54 ml of chlorine. Same, same amount of time in contact with the surface, okay, 2 to 5 minutes only. Okay, for floor, we need 5 gallons of water and 125 ml of chlorine. So, the amount of time in contact with the surface is 20 minutes. Okay. And then, lastly, washing vegetables. Okay. Now, to sanitize the vegetables, we can wash that using this solution. Okay. Five gallons of water and in a 27 ml of chlorine. And then, the contact time only is two to five minutes. Now, how is it done? Okay, first, you have to prepare a solution as prescribed on the recommended dosage. So, you have to follow this dosage, okay, for the preparation of the solution for sanitizing. And then, wash the equipment with soap and water. Scrub or brush if necessary. And after that, rinse with water. Then sanitize and allow draining or rinsing in chlorinated water. So these are the procedures in sanitizing the hand deep, okay, equipment, floor, and then washing vegetables. Okay, next. Do you have any questions about the uh, um Procedures in checking, sanitizing, and calibrating of the equipment and tools. Uh, we'll proceed to the calibration. Okay, for the calibrations. Okay. For the calibrations. When we say cal cal calibrations, it means measuring the ingredients. So, calibrating equipment is necessary to test for the accuracy of a certain devices or to indicate the scale. An example of equipment to be calibrated is the weighing scale and a sal salinometer. So, weighing scale have the reading of the weighing scale pointed or set as zero. So, before, you, before using the weighing scale, scale we need to calibrate it first okay the the purpose is to test for the accuracy of a certain device so make sure that the uh, weighing scale have the reading of zero or pointed or set at zero okay and next one is the salinometer the brine solution is poured into the graduated cylinder and dips the salinometer. 
to get the reading. Okay, so to use the salinometer, of course, we need the graduated cylinder. And then we have to soak the salinometer to the solution. Okay, so we have to dip the salinometer to get the reading. The way to use this equipment is to let it float in the brine solution and get the reading. Okay? Hayaan lang nating mag-float siya para makuha natin yung reading. Or, again, the way to use this equipment is to let it float in the brine solution and get the uh, reading. Again, if we are using the weighing scale and salinometer, okay, to measure the ingredients or the salinity of the the solutions we have to calibrate it first okay so when we say calibrate um we will make sure that the weighing scale is set as zero okay and then we should know also how to use the salinometer it is necessary calibrating equipment is necessary to test for the accuracy of a certain device or indicate the scale. Okay, that's all for week one, quarter four. Okay, so since you don't have any questions, thank you for listening and be ready for the activities. Good luck and have a nice day.